welcome to my channel. Today we are gonna learn how to make this swimsuit cover-up, beach robe, um, summer vest, call it whatever you want to call it, wear it however you want to wear it, but it's very easy. It's made out of two parts. The back part, which is one piece, and two front panels. Let's go into the measurements first. So um, I will tell you my measurements, uh, how I measured it. Uh, the only measurement I needed is the circumference of my hips. Let's say the circumference of my hips is 100 centimeters. My lovely Americans, you are gonna have to do your own conversions from inches. I can't get that thing, it just doesn't, it's not happening. Anyway, 100 centimeters. I divided that by two, so 50 centimeters for the back. Uh, but I wanted it to be flowy, so what I did is I added 10 centimeters to this. So five and five on each side. So basically, instead of chaining 50 centimeters, I chained 60 centimeters. For the sides, I took the 50 centimeters, the half, divided it by two, so each side would be 25 centimeters. What I did is I added five centimeters to the side. And this is how you can adjust it to uh, your size. If you want to make it even wider, add more. For the sewing part, it's sewn in the shoulders and sewn on the sides. And I left a little slits, because why not? For the yarn, I used this type of yarn called Chainet. You can Google it to see where you can find it. If you can find it in your uh, craft store, I bought it at AC Moore. But if you can't find the exact same yarn, use any cotton yarn. That should work as well. Third, the hook. You are going to use the hook number that is required by the yarn that you are using. Um, and it doesn't matter what thickness of the yarn you are using, you would still need to make, like for me, the 60 centimeters width or the 70 or whatever width you need. So it doesn't matter how many chains you will actually have in your chain, you would need it wide enough. Maybe your one chain will be two of my chains or maybe one of my chain will be two of your chains. Regardless of that, you're just gonna go with the, um, with the length that is on the measuring tape. And the last thing is I was looking through my channel's analytics and 85% of you guys that are watching my tutorials and commenting and being active are actually not subscribed to my channel. Uh, so please take the time to hit the subscribe button because it means a lot and it's a really good motivator to keep working and to keep uh, designing and to keep uh, filming and it's so much work that goes behind the camera that you guys don't see. So yeah, take the time to subscribe. And if you're ready to start, give this video a thumbs up, grab your yarn, crochet hook, let's get to work. This is the yarn I'm gonna be using today. I bought it at AC Moore. It did not have any information. Um, I'm assuming it's um, synthetic with some cotton. I have a feeling like these white parts are a little more cottony than the tan parts. Anyway, uh, one lovely subscriber told me that this uh, yarn is called Chainet. I believe it's from French um, and this is how the yarn looks like. You can see it doesn't look like a regular yarn. It's something different. But you can obviously use any regular cotton yarn for this project um, because um, it will work as well as this one. And as for the crochet hook, I will be using a 5 millimeter crochet hook today. So this pattern has um, a repeat of 6 chains or you should uh, chain multiples of 6 to um, get the desired length. So. Uh, multiples of six. So what I did for the back part of the uh, robe, I chained 126 divided by six, 21. So um, to make the side, I would do 126 divided by two. It's 63 chains for one side. But because I want my robe to uh, overlap, I would need to make it not exactly the half, but add a little more. And since we have the repeat of six chains, I would add probably two repeats or two 
yeah, uh, two repeats, so I would add 12 uh, more chains, 75 chains total. So for this little sample, I will make, uh, I'll chain only 24, which divides by 6. And it's only a repeat of two rows, so it's going to be a no-brainer. And now we will put a treble into the sixth chain back. So for the treble, you will yarn over twice and count one, two, three, four, five into the sixth. Insert the hook into the chain, grab the yarn, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. This five chains, the chain four on the side counts as a treble plus chain one. Now chain three, skip two, one, two, single crochet into the next. Chain three again, skip two and put a V stitch into the, the next, but the V stitch only in this pattern is going to be a treble. chain two and a treble into the same chain. So it does look like a letter V but not, it's not the classic V stitch. It's treble, chain two, treble. And then the repeat starts. Chain three, skip two, single crochet into the next, chain three, skip two and a V stitch into the next. A treble, chain two, and a treble into the same stitch. And this is how you're gonna keep going until you reach the end of the row. So you have a V stitch, single crochet, V stitch, single crochet, and so on. And to finish the row, you would chain three, skip two, single crochet into the next. chain three, skip the two and you will have one chain at the end. You will put a treble, chain one and one more treble into the last stitch or chain. And that is what we have. And if it bends a little bit, don't worry about it. The next row will pull everything together. Next row we are starting the same with chain 5. The chain 4 counts as a treble plus chain 1. Into this very first chain 1 space we will put 2 trebles. 1 and 2. So basically we have a treble, chain 1 and 2 trebles. Chain 1 and move all the way into the V right here. Here we will put two trebles, one, two, chain one, and two more trebles into the same space. One, two, And the repeat starts. Chain one, move all the way to the next V and put two trebles, chain one, two trebles into that space. Treble, treble, chain one, and two more. One and two. To move on to the next V, chain one and move on to the next V until you reach the end of the row. You will finish the row exactly the same. You would chain one and then move into the last space. Put two trebles into the space. One, two, chain one and put a treble into the fourth chain from the previous row. One, two, three, four. A treble here. 
and now you can see how everything pulled together and it's a it's going to be a rectangle and now the repeat starts turn the work start again with chain 5 the chain 4 will count as a treble plus chain 1 yarn over twice and put a treble into right here into the very first stitch you can see they are the same now chain 3 you will put your single crochet into the chain 1 in between the groups then chain 3 and put the V stitch in between these groups that we, you put into the V your V is gonna be right here so yarn over twice a treble chain two a treble like so and the repeat starts chain three the single crochet goes in between these two groups into the chain one space chain three again into the next chain one space we'll put the v-stitch a treble chain two a treble and this is how you are going to be going till the end of the row just make sure your V stitches fall on top of the V stitches and this is like a small butterfly is right here also corresponding chain 3 single crochet into the chain 1 in between the groups and to finish this row you would chain 3 move yarn over twice find the fourth chain one two three four and put a treble into it chain one and one more treble into the same stitch just like that and now you will turn the work and repeat row number two you already know how you can rewind but I'll get you started chain five the chain four counts as a treble plus chain one into the space we will put two trebles chain one move into the middle of the V stitch and here you will put two trebles chain one two trebles two trebles chain one and two trebles and so on till the end of the row then you're gonna turn and start again with chain 5 and a treble into the same stitch and yeah this is how you go back and forth back and forth repeating these two rows until you reach the desired length of the project okay so um, I finished my 30 rows of back and forth back and forth of this rectangle for you it's gonna be for um, you know um, as long as you want um, until you start decreasing so um, it forms a slanted side on this side and this side where it's gonna be straight and your arm is gonna go um, and the decrease is very easy we are gonna turn the work what I want to do is decrease one um, column every time so I would chain one and slip stitch into the very first stitch 
slip stitch into the chain one, slip stitch in each of the two double crochets. Now this part is excluded and uh, to follow the pattern this side we would start with single crochet so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna single crochet into this space and just continue with the pattern chain four and a V stitch into the center treble chain two treble and you just carry it on just like you did the the row before the previous one chain four single crochet in between the groups chain four again treble chain two and treble and so on until the end of the row you will turn the work and start this part, this repeat of the row where you have two trebles, chain one, two trebles. And you are gonna come back, not till the very end, you are gonna stop here, so we are gonna decrease. Now because this is our last vestige, we would finish accordingly. We will put two trebles into the space, just like we would have in this row or this row, then chain one and put a treble into the second double crochet, uh, this uh, oh, treble, <laughs> and yeah. And we are not moving any farther. Now we'll turn the work and start with a decrease again. So chain one slip stitch into the first, slip stitch into the chain one, slip stitch in one of each of the trebles, in each one of the trebles, and here single crochet into the space, like so. And we are starting again with chain four, And a V stitch into in between of these trebles. Treble, chain two, and treble. And again, keep going with this row that way, come back with this row, and repeat the same steps. And you would finish that row into this first V. Just like here, you will put two uh, trebles, chain one and one treble into this one, turn the work, and again slip stitch. And you're going to be decreasing for as many times as wide you want your shoulder to be. And here is a quick glimpse on, so this is the back of the tunic and this is the front, so I decreased only four times. And this is the width of the shoulders. I went ahead already and um, sewed it to the back. And once you finish the back part and you finish the panels, sew the panels at the shoulders and come back. I will show you how we are going to work um, this neckline around so it looks a little more aesthetic. It doesn't look so rough and chopped. And then you can um, sew the sides together and you're going to be done. Since I started sewing, I thought some of you might know, some of you might not know how to sew, or maybe some of you just want to know how I do it. Uh, let me zoom you in. So um, I basically counted when I put when I uh, put them together. I counted from this side that way and aligned them. And what I do basically is because they're absolutely identical, I take the V of this treble and the V of this treble and sew them together. And this is how I go. V from here, V from there. Then the chain one space. Again, I'm trying to get the both strands of the yarn. 
and same here. I prefer to take both strands of the yarn because it's more secure and once you're done apart just pull it gently don't pull it too tight so it's not gathered together um, but it's tight enough so it's not too wobbly because you want the garment to hold the shape and there I have it the shoulders are sewn um, together and uh, now we are gonna start working on the collar so I want to have um, two pieces that tie together on the top. Um, I will start with um, a chain and make the chain as long as you will probably want or need for um, the ties. So I'm just going to go ahead and chain maybe 50 chains. And here are my 50 chains. I will start in the left corner. Make sure the project is facing you with the right side. Find the corner, insert the hook into it. Then grab the chain from the, the chain and slip stitch. And there is your chain. Now to connect these corners, I'm going to chain four, one, two, three, four, and slip stitch into the next corner. Then again, to connect these two, I'm going to chain four. You can chain five or six, totally up to you. When I tried this robe on, it was um, the neckline was a bit too wide for me. That's why I'm chaining four. You can chain five, six, however you want, um, depending on the width of the color you want. So slip stitch. Then moving on to the next corner again, chain four slip stitch into the corner and now to connect this corner to um, the actual project I'm gonna chain five because here we had a chain four so I would need one extra chain to join right here at the top of the V one two three four five and join in the V stitch or in the corner and I want to try to grab a couple strands of yarn so I don't have too many gaps, like so. And now when I zoomed it out, you can see um, that we don't have any more rough edges, everything is smooth. And from here on, you can either put slip stitches or single crochets, um, and you can go all the way around. But if you don't feel like working the whole thing around, you can cut the yarn right here and move to this side and same thing, chain 50 or however you want for the ties and um, join in the corner and connect the corners into the project and you're going to be done. Alright, if you decided to slip stitch your way around, when you get to this point uh, where you have to connect the project to the corners, you would stop right here, um, just where like we stopped uh, right here. You will chain five, one, two, three, four, five, or whatever number you needed, and then you are gonna slip stitch into the corner. So do the steps in the opposite way, and then you are gonna chain four and connect to this corner. Then you're going to chain four again and connect to the next corner with a slip stitch. And chain four again and connect to the last corner with a slip stitch. And these are the connections. And now you're not cutting the yarn, you are chaining the amount of chains you chained for this side for me is 50, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
Once you're done with the neckline, you are gonna sew the sides. Make sure to measure how wide you want your uh, sleeves to be. If you want slits on the side, you would sew only a little bit. I already showed you how I sew my projects together, so just go ahead and finish the tunic. And this was it for today's tutorial. I hope you had fun learning something new today, uh, crocheting something new for your wardrobe. And I hope you're gonna have huge pleasure wearing your swimsuit cover-up, beach robe, summer vest. Don't you love this all three in one shebang? Anyway, you guys have a fantastic week. Stay safe on the road if you are traveling. I will catch you up in my next tutorial. Bye!